Project Pandora. In 1953, the Russians began to bombard the U.S. Embassy in Moscow with electromagnetic radiation and the microwave spectrum, but the fact was kept secret from the embassy employees. U.S. Ambassador Stossel contracted a blood disease, bleeding eyes, nausea, and eventually lymphoma. He and other employees eventually died as a result of the microwave attacks. Dr. Henry Kissinger sent a secret memo giving hazard pay to embassy personnel in the 1970s. Before the attacks, the USSR had met with the U.S. to try to head off an arms race in electromagnetic weapons, but were refused. In retaliation, they began microwaving the U.S. Embassy. It is possible that the U.S. government took advantage of the situation and used the Embassy staff as microwave guinea pigs. The Department of Defense's Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, set up a lab at Walter Reed Army Institute of Research and participated in Project Pandora. Scientists began zapping monkeys to study the biological effects of highly concentrated microwave frequencies. Similar studies were conducted at the VA hospital in Kansas City, University of Rochester, Brooks Air Force Base, Johns Hopkins, MIT, the MITRE Corporation, University of Pennsylvania, and other domestic and foreign labs. In one study, Dr. Jose Delgado experimented on four human subjects using radio waves, reporting they experienced different emotions, sensations, and colored visions. Delgado stated that these weapons were, quote, more dangerous than atomic destruction. With knowledge of the brain, he said, we may transform, we may shape, direct, roboticize man. I think the great danger of the future is that we will have roboticized human beings who are not aware that they have been roboticized, unquote. Dr. Delgado was in fact responsible for the development of a brain transponder that was used to roboticize human subjects. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Where do they come from? This is the title of a recent book on the subject of UFOs or unidentified flying objects. And the author is Sydney businessman Mr. Richard Tamling, who claims to have had several sightings of UFOs. Mr. Tamling was uh, an RAF photographer and an expert in uh, aircraft recognition. Now, in the preface of this book, Mr. Tamling, you say that now that the existence of UFOs is gaining widespread acceptance, the question is, where do they come from? But my question to you is, are you sure that uh, the existence of these things is gaining widespread recognition? They've been around for 20 years now in this present phase. I think that if we haven't learnt of their presence by now in 20 years, that we're the one that needs questioning. <laughs> what about part two of this? Where do they come from? What are the latest theories? I've researched quite deeply into this, and my solution is that they come from everywhere in space. This galaxy, other galaxies, everywhere except Earth. You mentioned other galaxies. One American physics professor has said that if they do come from other galaxies, they would have taken two million years to get here. What about that? Well, this professor hasn't heard of teleportation yet. You know, teleportation was a wild idea, but it is already a line of scientific research in America. What does it mean? It's the transmission of matter from one point to another without any physical medium. So there's no traveling at the speed of light or any other speed? No, it's like our image on TV tonight. It, we're here, our image is transported somewhere else. In fact, with teleportation, we would be transported elsewhere. Sounds like an interesting theory, anyway. If that's so, that certainly makes us Earth people rather backward, doesn't it? Yes, I think it does. I think we have a long way to go before we ever can dream of these standards. Mr. Tamling, let's look at some of the examples of uh, UFO shapes that have come into you. There are many shapes. I've numbered 171. I think 136 appear in the book. Some are weird and wonderful, some are interesting. So, some are way out. There's a block there, like a child's block. Or weird shapes. Surely some of them must be wildly wrong. They're, they're so, such a variety of them. Well, very few people get a chance to photograph a UFO or a flying saucer, and a sketch is the only way of representing it. Representing it. Hmm. Well, if you talk about photographs, well, you do have some from your book here. What's this one? Uh, this is taken by Paul Villa at Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, the saucer was quite low. Uh, he was prepared beforehand by a warning, and he was there with camera on hand to take this. This might sound weird, but he has done this on two occasions. A close-up of the same saucer in a slightly different position. The uh, windows that would appear to be around the rim are not windows at all. Uh, there's no windows visible in this photograph. This is something that only shows in our atmosphere, apparently, according to Paul Filler. This is Paris. UFOs over Paris. The Eiffel Tower on the right-hand side there. Uh, I don't know much about the photograph, except it's claimed to be genuine. Paul Villa again. Uh, Bernalillo, New Mexico. This saucer was claimed to come from Coma Berenices, 400 light years away. Uh, this is the Trinidad saucer, or object. This photograph has been under scrutiny uh, 
uh, by American scientists for a long time and has been proved genuine. This is a photograph uh, from a 8mm uh, colour movie film. Uh, it's pretty hard to fake on 8mm colour movie. You're not suggesting that some of those might be fakes? I think this is always a question. Uh, you know, we people here aren't always honest, and I think there's always the opportunist. Mr. Tamley, you say here in your book that it's only a matter of time before the strangers from the skies come to know us better. Now, are you suggesting some kind of invasion from outer space? This is quite possible. I don't think in the sense that we would think of it, but people coming, yes. Uh, in 20 years, they have, well, their source of sightings have been at military bases, any place that would be a key situation or key position mm. in wartime. Now, why would they want to come to uh, the Earth, uh, the planet Earth? Because we're, as I said earlier, apparently a rather technologically backward nation or Earth or planet compared with where they've come from. Yes, I haven't an answer, a direct answer to this. I pose this as a question uh, to the reader of the book. Um, as a matter of fact, my book was written in that spirit. I am telling them so, so many things that I believe are honest and true. I'm leading them to think for themselves. I don't want them to believe in flying saucers or disbelieve in flying saucers. I want them to get out and look and see them. All right, well, we'll go out and look and see and think, and thank you very much, Mr. Tamling.